with me. And I was so broke that whenever my close friends, uh, in order to comfort me, they took me out to a nice restaurant, I was sitting there looking at the dish and saying, I wish that was the cash instead of something else. And that's how painful it was. I wanted to do something to, be, uh, to comfort me, but no, nothing seemed to be working. I turned to God and prayed, but every time I prayed, I prayed the same thing. I don't want to be in the same area in heaven with them. That was all I was praying. I started having depression. I was going through deep depression that I didn't even want to go to this ethnic Korean uh, close by grocery shopping because I was so afraid I might run into them. That's how serious I, I was. And that's when God gave me a wake up call. Because God, I guess, listening to my prayers, I guess God wanted to do something to wake me up from that depression. And guess what? He was really, really humorous. I find my God very humorous in many, many times of my life because he gave me greater pain. You know how that works. I loved my uh, mother-in-law so much that when I was told that she only had a few months to live from a pancreatic cancer, oh my God, I just forgot about all the details of the pain that I was suffering with because it was a greater pain. There was nothing greater when it comes to pain than losing somebody you love. And that's how God healed me. Can you believe it? I was healed because I was so focused on praying for my mother-in-law. And after a few months, she passed away. And after everything was over, my husband and I was sitting at the table sharing how less I was about the past. Because compared to losing somebody you love, nothing was really, really serious. And that's how God treated me. And then I praise God for that. I am still going through the tunnel. It doesn't seem to be ending because I am so broken that I'm only doing a ministry. But look around and then if you see anybody that knows me from my church, they will see the same thing. I am the happiest right now. Because I'm telling you, because there's so many of you that might be going through the same tunnel that I am right now. Although it's dark, you know how darkness kind of shocks you in the beginning and you want to get out of there as fast as you want? It's only a while to be able to see a little bit. Let me treat, and you will be able to find Jesus right next to you, holding your hand. Sometimes he carries you through the tunnel. And all the tunnel looks dark and seems endless. There has to be an end. And that's the path. If that's the path that God has prepared for you, let's just work it out together. Because once you find Jesus inside the tunnel, sitting right next to you, then you will have this peace that I am having right now. I was never happier before. And then I'm here to testify that Jesus is the only one that you could turn to when you're in pain. He might treat you the same way he treated me. It was very painful, but you get cured. That is for sure. And then I praise God for this opportunity to share with you what I went through. It may not sound very happy, but it is happy in the end. And Jesus lives inside me. And he is going over the tunnel and going through the tunnel with me, holding hands together. So let's have, uh, uh, invite Jesus into our hearts because that's the only peace that you could enjoy. And if you ask me if I were, um, if, if I were to uh, exchange that peace with anything, like money, then I would say no because it makes me so much happier than Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything, even the hardships that we went through and we might be going through right now. Because we know and we believe that everything is in your plan. Everything is in your hand. Although it's painful right now, we know and we believe that you are doing this to us, to cure us, to completely kill us. Touch our hearts. Intervene deeply in our
our lives so that we could meet you in prison every day and night, knowing that you're holding us, knowing that you're carrying us through all these hardships. Be with us and never leave us alone. We thank you and love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, enjoy your breakfast. All right, let me let me stop everybody just for a moment, please. Please stop right where you're at. Please give me your attention. I have a very, very, very special announcement. I said yesterday was a glorious day because we celebrated all day long. We we met with the Lord. We prayed. We had a great time, and we went until almost eleven o'clock last night. And what a great, great program uh, it was in the Lord Jesus Christ. But at 12.56 last night, Riley Stephen Drake, 7 pounds, 14 ounces, was born right after midnight last night. And we give God all the glory, and I'm the proud grandpa. That's my grandson. He was born at 1256. My son, Wiley Jr., who is also a pastor, just texted me and said, you got a new grand boy, Riley Stephen Drake. Seven pounds, four ounces, 19 and a half inches long. And a big kid. So give God a hand, give God the glory. And that was number 10 grandkid for me. And I have two great grandkids. Y'all think God ain't good? God bless you. And now you're going to enjoy God's goodness from what he has created. Everything from bananas to eggs to sausage to all of the great blessings. But give God a hand for what he's doing, would you please? And uh, my uh, daughter... Uh, in law, my son's wife's going to say, you put all of that on television? <laughs> and I'm going to say, yes, Crystal, we put it on TV. God bless you, dear mother. Mother's name is Crystal. Everything went well. God bless her. This is their second child, and we praise the Lord for God's goodness. Now let's enjoy God.